A fundamental challenge for artists is to make their work stand out. And one good strategy to make your work stand out and grab people's attention is to show them things from an unusual perspective, from a different point of view, an extreme angle. And so for this project, we're going to make a drawing from a worm's eye view. We're going to look at things from a very extreme angle. And I'm going to actually say worm's eye view, or if you want to do a bird's eye view looking down an aerial perspective, that's fine too. But the first thing you're going to do is sketch things out. And in this video, I'm using a Sharpie. You should, of course, plan first in pencil. But I'm going to sketch things out. So I'm making this extreme close-up of a mushroom, and I'm showing the bottom of that mushroom cap to show that I'm looking up at this subject. And I thought I would create a little bit more sense of action by showing like raindrops falling and get that scale of just how large those things would be. Um, from a different perspective. It's always good to think about other people's perspectives, whether in art or any other context, thinking about how things look, how the world looks from another vantage point, having that sort of empathy and understanding. That's one of the things that art is really great for. And so considering other perspectives, other viewpoints um, in all different aspects, all dimensions of that can be helpful and make your artwork more impactful. Now, I'm choosing to paint mine, and as I'm painting, I'm paying attention to how wet my brush is. I'm laying down the colors, first starting off with a little bit of a, a lighter wash uh, with more water on my brush to spread it around. And then I am going back over it, creating little streaks of bolder greens and yellows and blues on the grass to get and I'm keeping the brush strokes more or less vertical to get that texture of the grass more correct. Um, after that, I'm going to paint a brown ground for the dirt, but I want to mix in a little bit of yellow, maybe some orange, maybe a little black in some areas. So I get some variations, some shadows and highlights. And finally, I'm going to go over the water. And I purposefully allowed the, the water droplets to be painted over previously so that I get that transparency so that I can see like the blue is going over it, but a little bit of the, the underpainting is showing through. So I'm just like real water is transparent. I want to see a little bit of what's underneath and behind those water droplets as they're coming down. Now, after I, I've done all that, I let it sit usually for like a few minutes and let it soak in, and then I look to revise my work. I go over things, I add a little bit more detail, I add a little bit more contrast, some darker streaks and everything like that to darken the shadows, maybe outline some areas, make, make a few things pop out a little bit more. But it, it's crucial to do that after the paint has dried a little bit because you don't want too much pooling and um, spreading and dripping into areas you don't want it to go. So sometimes it's a good idea to, to let, it, let it rest, let it dry a little bit, and then go back and add more, layer more color in. 